Welcome to Lights and Buttons, and in this episode, we will be continuing our discussion on the Sony mirrorless system. Now, with the Sony mirrorless system, uh, if you haven't seen the previous video, I talked about the pros and cons coming from a Nikon shooter standpoint. Um, I'll include a link in the description below if you haven't seen that yet. But if you get a chance, uh, take a look at that video. I kind of go into more in depth with the Sony system compared to Nikon. Now, one thing that I didn't cover in the previous video is the camera body design of Sony versus Nikon when it comes to sensor sizes. Now, let me get into a little bit of detail. Uh, when I talk about sensor sizes, that's not directly correlating with the body size, but I see a little bit of pattern going on uh, with Sony's, at least with the current offering. They have the more compact design for the APS-C cameras, and of course with the full frame cameras, you get the larger bodies. Now, when it comes to Nikon, their approach is a little bit different. When it comes to the full frame, of course, you have the larger bodies, but when it comes to the APS-C cameras, you have the different lines. You have the 3000, 5000, and 7000 series. Uh, for example, the 3000 series have the smaller camera body, and when you go up to the 7000 series, you get the slightly larger camera body. With Sony's APS-C lineup, I feel like the interchangeable lens cameras are kind of geared towards the compactness. Um, the compactness is kind of emphasized in their design, which I don't necessarily agree with because when you have a camera that has interchangeable lenses, whether it's mirrorless or like a DSLR, you're gonna be carrying around probably at least one other lens, and that means you're carrying around a camera bag. You want more versatility, um, so it's kind of like a trade-off, and I feel like if you're gonna emphasize compactness, that's more like the, um, more like a point and shoot kind of setup. With an interchangeable lens camera, the whole point is that you can select the specific type of lens that you need for your application and then switch it when the situation changes. When I'm looking at converting from one camera system to another, one big factor is the glass, right? When you buy lenses, that's a big investment. And for me, I've dumped a lot of money into it. And with the Nikon F mount, that's kind of going away with mirrorless, right? Nikon is going with the Z mount and along with the DSLRs, they'll continue the F mount, at least it sounds like it. Um, but for all their mirrorless cameras, the Z6 and the Z7 as of now, um, they're only offering that with the Z mount. So either way, it sounds like if I want native lenses, whether I go with the Nikon Z mount or the uh, Sony FE mount, I want to have to buy new glass. So that's going to be a factor. And for me, Factoring the autofocus performance that I mentioned in the last video, I think that going over to the Sony system would probably be best and then getting the native lenses to fully take advantage of the, uh, the system. I do want to make one note with Nikon though. They have their FTZ adapter which allows you to put F-mount lenses onto the Z system um, or the mirrorless system rather. That's a very nice concept, at least on paper, but I've ran into two problems. The first problem is that you don't get the full um, image stabilization features that the uh, mirrorless cameras offer. Uh, so instead of the five axis image stabilization, you only get three when you use the adapter. So for me, that's kind of a drawback because I want to integrate more video into my work. And I may as well take advantage of the full um, IBIS system that's included in the Nikon mirrorless system, which I can't do without going native. So. It sounds like I have to buy new glass altogether. Another thing is that Nikon was kind of boasting about the uh, the new Z mount being wider than the F mount and allowing for faster glass. Of course, you can look at Nikon's roadmap, and I know at least they have one f.95 lens coming down the road. I believe it's their 58 millimeter. It's a huge lens, but manual focus. And I guess on the flip side, you can also argue with modern cameras, higher sensitivity, do you really need f1.2 or f.95? That's up to you. That's a personal decision. And another thing about the FTZ adapter is that they don't support autofocus for the AFD lenses. So if you're looking for a camera to do both video and still photos, I think Sony is a better system as of now, but it's not perfect. Sony doesn't offer the APS-C kind of specs that I want on the camera body size. I also feel like the, um, the layout isn't as good in terms of the menus. Um, I think the Nikon's ergonomic is a little bit better. But that all being said, I decided to pick up a Sony a7 III, which is actually the main camera you're watching through right now. 
But of course, your mileage may vary and just because something works for me doesn't necessarily mean that it will work for you. I hope this video is useful. Um, I've been looking around at the uh, SonyAlphaRumors.com and different sites to see what are the upcoming cameras. Um, I know they recently launched the, uh, the new APS-C cameras and then along with the Sony A9 series, uh, they have something coming out there as well, I believe the Sony A9 II. Um, so, but it seems like they have the, um, I guess the two ends, the two extremes, the, the compact and the uh, full frame professional series covered, but I kind of want to see more um, develop within the middle where you're kind of in between the prosumer space, if you will. Um, but anyway, hopefully this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.